In Ephesians chapter 5 here, so we're starting a new year, right? We're coming up to a holiday where it's new. It says new, right? We just passed a couple of holidays that Thanksgiving, Christmas, we were thankful for those, right? We're thankful that we have food, we have clothing. We're thankful for Christ dying for us on the cross. New Year's we should be thankful for as well. The new year, we're getting more time from God. We could have died yesterday. We could have died today. We could die tomorrow for all we know. But he's giving us, he's allowing us to go into this new year. And he's giving us this time. And here in Ephesians 5, if you look down in your Bible at verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So circumspectly, just real quick, circumspectly is a word that I had to look up, so I kind of want to explain it to you guys. Some synonyms for that is cautious or guarded, maybe weary. So when it says circumspectly, it says circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We cautiously got to go through this world as wise people. And if you, let's uh, continue in verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, this is the point I wanted to get to. We need to redeem the time and walk in this world circumspectly as wise. We need to redeem this time, though, that God is giving us. God is allowing us to go into this new year and giving us more time. And so I just want to explain to you first that God is the one that created time and controls time. If you would, turn to Psalm 90. At Psalm 90. So in Psalm 90, verse number 1, this is going to kind of come off of redeeming the time real quick, but just keep in mind the redeeming the time. I'm, I'm trying to show you that God is the one that created time and controls time. Here in Psalm 90, verse 1, it says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Now, real quick, I want to stop right there because it says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God is from everlasting to everlasting. He has no time period. He is the time maker. So you could see that no one was before him. So no one could have created time before him. He's the one that is the time maker. He's from everlasting. Let's continue down with verse number three. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So basically, this is a psalm that's saying what in Second Peter chapter number 3 is saying, that a thousand years to the Lord is as a day. And I'm paraphrasing. Don't quote me on this. But a thousand years to the Lord is as a day, and a day a thousand years. So God has no time frame. He's in nowhere in time. And uh, if you would turn to Genesis 1. So we can see here that definitely God is nowhere. Like he's, he's from everlasting to everlasting. Just keep that in mind as we keep going. In Genesis chapter number 1, we see that he creates time. He creates a time period. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So what we can see from this here is that in verse number one, he's creating the heaven and the earth. In verse number two through four, light was created. In verse number five, there was three things that happened. He made light day, he made dark night, and he made the evening and the morning the first day. So on that very first day, otherwise it wouldn't be a first day. How, how would we have time, right? So God created time right here. There's no way he could have been created. There's no way that anybody else could have created time. He gives us this time. 
And if you would, turn to James chapter 4. Now, the sermon is about redeeming the time. But I, I'm just trying to go through again and show you that God is the one that's in control of time. He's the one that has control of time, no matter what. And in uh, James chapter 4, So, the next thing I want to show you is that not only did he create time, but he also can shorten and lengthen the days of, a, of man, basically. So, us here on earth, like I said, this is why we should be thankful of the new year. He's giving us another day. He's allowing our days to keep going. But he can lengthen and shorten days as well for us. So, in James chapter 4, let's look down. I'm sorry. Keep your finger in James chapter 4. Turn to Deuteronomy 5. So here in uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 5, let's look at verse number 32. In verse number 32, Deuteronomy chapter number 5, the Bible reads, Ye shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye, that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. So God said that if we obey him, he will prolong our days. Now, the, the point is to show you that he, will, he can prolong our days. Let's continue in verse number one of chapter six. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, and all the days of thy life and that thy days may be prolonged. So as we can see from just that short little passage, he will prolong our days if we obey him, but he can prolong our days. And in Ecclesiastes, if you, if you want to just write it down as a verse to look up later, in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 8, he says he shortens the days of the wicked. So he can shorten the days, and he can prolong days. Now, in James chapter 4, this is, this is the text that I wanted to get into. Now that we can see from the Bible that God is the one that controls time. I'm pretty sure as believers we know that God can control anything. I wanted to show you through the Bible though. Okay, in James chapter 4, basically, even though God can prolong or shorten days, no matter what, our life is a vapor here on earth. And in James chapter 4, let's read this. In James chapter 4, verse 13. Go to now, ye that say... <coughs> Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such city, go into such a city and continue there, continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. I'm going to stop right there real quick because in verse 13 we can see that this person here saying, go to now, or sorry, he's saying today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Well, first of all, we could say he's, seen, he's saying today or tomorrow. Well, you know, I could do this today or tomorrow. You know, I can, I can go and preach the gospel today or tomorrow. I could read my Bible today or tomorrow. I could pray today or tomorrow. This is, this is what this guy is saying. He's, he's not very strong on just, let's do it right now because this is what we need to do. He's just saying today or tomorrow, right? Well, let's continue in verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. We could see here that we don't know what's tomorrow. We have to take advantage of what's today because we don't know if we have tomorrow. God, God gives us the time that we have. We need to redeem the time that he's given us now because if we don't, we may not have tomorrow. We may not have another day. We may not even have another hour Turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 5 again. Ephesians chapter 5. 
Ephesians chapter number 5. So, and here's a, here's a quick example. I'm pretty sure us adults will know, but for the children out there, a vapor, if you go outside in the cold and you breathe out, there's like a little smoke cloud, right? So when you breathe out that smoke cloud, that smoke cloud comes and then it goes, right? Once you stop breathing out. That's what God is saying as a vapor. He's saying that that vapor will, you come there and then gone as soon as you stop breathing out. You come and go. That's what God is saying is from that. And that's the example that he's using. But in Ephesians chapter number five, So the, the reason why I'm coming back here again is because this is what it all comes back to. Is that in verse number 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need to continually remember that we may not have it another day, redeeming the time. That's why we need to be thankful for the new year. The new year that we're getting more time for. Now, now that we know this, we, can, we need to redeem the time. God's created time. He's given us the time. Let's redeem it. Be thankful for it as well. Let's, uh, here's some things we can do, because I don't want to just say a bunch of things and then just say, be thankful, and we need to redeem the time. Well, here's some things we can do to redeem that time. First of all, in prayer, we can be thankful uh, First thing, though, preaching the gospel in Mark 16, verse 15, the Bible says, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's something that's important that God says, especially at the end, end of gospels. He says that mainly. Uh, how, praying, like I said. If you would turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians chapter number five. So in First Thessalonians chapter number five, let's start in verse 15, because here's a list that we can know, or well, what God tells us basically, that we can do to do something better in the new year, to help us be more thankful and loving to him and Redeeming the time, basically, is what we need to do. And uh, let's start in verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And, you know, if you're, if you're really thinking about redeeming the time, you know, this is a good list to go to. Well, if I don't know what to do, 1 Thessalonians 15 through 22, you can know what to do. And those are just some things of what God wants us to do. And, uh... This is, real, this is really important because in order to know these things, in order to even have 1 Thessalonians to even know, you need to read the Bible. In Acts 17.11, the Bible actually says, and this is just part of the verse, you can go there later if you'd like, but re they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. And this is speaking of the Bereans. The Bereans searched the scriptures daily to know what was right, to what to do. And they can know how to redeem the time. In uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, actually, Pastor just preached on this this morning, is study to show thyself approved. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. How can we know how to please God, how to be thankful to God, you know? We need to be, be in our word, be in His word in order to know. And so... Just a quick recap, because I've been repeating things a lot, and I've probably been back and forth a little bit. Well, God controls the time. God created the time, right? He gives us the time. And life is, life is but a vapor. We need to remember that. 
going into the new year. And so let's make use of the time here and three things. Maybe, maybe this will ring in your head later on or not, but pray, preach, and read. Pray, preach the gospel, and read your Bible. Those are three things that will never fail you. So, like I said, let's, let's again be thankful for this new year, this time that God's given us, and let's redeem it. You never know if we're going to get more time after that. Let's pray. Amen. Lord, thank you for this new year that we're going into. Thank you for your word and your scriptures, Lord, for being able to uh, just show us your truth, Lord. Help us to really use the time you give us for you, Lord, and to be thankful to have a true heart for you, to work for you, Lord. Give us that heart and give us the strength and courage to go out there and just do what's right, Lord, in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.